Hey guys, uh, hope you're doing well. This is for Tuesday. This lesson is for Tuesday, uh, April 28th. Um, I've been looking over um, our lessons here to determine where we're going to go from here. Uh, yesterday, you should have finished up um, a nine week exam, test number nine. Um, and hopefully there were no issues with that, that I'll grade that and let you know what your grade is on that. Just give me a little bit of time to get that done. Um, but, uh, in looking over the remaining lessons, I determined that, um, instead of going into chapter number 10, which is statistics, uh, we're going to skip that and go to chapter number 11, because this is a little more pertinent for algebra two, which is what you guys would be taking next year. So uh, we're going to go ahead and jump to chapter number 11. Chapter number 11 deals with rational expressions and equations. Okay. Uh, we're going to start here with uh, lesson 11.1. So go ahead and take out your notes. Uh, you can title that uh, the notes for today, introduction to rational expressions. This is lesson 11.1. And this is found on page number 406, okay? So go ahead and open your books to page 406 and number your notes for today, or uh, title your notes for today, Introduction to Rational Expressions, Lesson 11.1. Uh, we're going to read through this here, and I'm just going to pull out some of the in, uh, important information and kind of explain our way through this. But we're going to st start at the top of lesson 11.1. The first thing we're going to do is I want to point out this uh, definition here. I want this in your notes. Uh, a rational expression is a fraction whose denominator or numerator or both are composed of polynomials, meaning you have more than one term in either your numerator or your denominator. So up to this point, when we're dealing with fractions, we've had basically just one term, numerators or denominators. Now with these rational expressions, we're gonna find them as polynomials, meaning they're gonna have more than one term in either the numerator or the denominator or both, okay, in some cases, okay? Um, now, because um, these expressions are basically um, just regular fractions, they're still going to follow basic fraction um, uh, rules, basic arithmetic rules for fractions. So they give you this table A here down um, in the middle here of page 406, uh, basic rules for fraction arithmetic okay this just reviews the rules of what we do when we're dividing fractions multiplying fractions adding and subtracting and so on and so forth okay because all of these steps will apply um, to these rational expressions all right we're still going to be following these basic arithmetic rules with dealing uh, with fractions now because rational expressions are algebraic expressions uh, what we're going to do is what we need to understand is that we can take the value a value for x and we can plug in values for um, those variables in these rational expressions turn the page to 407 and look at the top here example 11.1 a it says evaluate the rational expression at x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. Basically what they're doing is they're just pulling random values for this variable of x. And we're going to plug these va variables, uh, the, the values for these variables, in um, to this fraction here. Okay, so uh, at letter A here, an example 11.1, we've got uh, negative 3x um, over x plus 9. So they took take this first value of negative 2 and they plug in negative 2 for x in our numerator and denominator. So now we have negative 3 times negative 2 divided by negative 2 plus 9. Okay, and they simplify and then they solve. Okay, if there's reducing that needs to be done, they would reduce it. But here we get this term. Uh, the, the answer here would be 6 over 7. We can't reduce that, so that's my answer. So they're taking these values for x and plugging them into these um, rational expressions to show us that we can basically take uh, random values for x and plug them in and solve them like regular fractions. Okay. Um, however, there are certain circumstances where we will create something that is considered undefined. Okay. Look below 11.1 here. Anytime we get a fraction that produces, uh, or anytime we get an answer that that is one over zero. Um, this is considered undefined, 
Okay, we cannot have um, a divisor uh, of zero. Okay, division by zero is always considered undefined. So I want you to put that little note in your notes. Okay, write this down. Division by zero is always undefined. And what I mean by that is when you have a number on the top and then on the bottom, you have a zero. You cannot divide by a zero. All right, it's considered undefined in these rational expressions. All right, um, so put that little note in your notes so that you remember that anytime you get a number over zero, undefined. All right, that's your answer. Now, uh, what what we need to understand here is we're creating what's called um, a domain. Okay, and basically, uh, you, you can look down here. The definition for domain is. Uh, the real numbers that can be used as input values for a variable in an expression is called a domain. By the way, I want that in your notes. Okay, what's a domain? Real numbers that can be used as input values for a variable in an expression. That's called a domain. So this domain is basically any value, <clears throat> excuse me, for x that we can put in that does not create an undefined answer. Now remember what's undefined. Any number over zero is undefined always, okay? So we're finding values that we can plug into these uh, rational expressions, uh, the variables for these rational expressions that create answers that are not undefined. And that's what our domain is, okay? So we can say, um, you know, this through this is our domain. Um, so we're creating these domain, uh, this domain of expressions, okay? Now, look at the example 11.1b, okay? Here's another example of evaluating the rational expression, but they're going to show you what they mean by undefined. So they have the value of x set as negative 3. So they plug in negative 3 for your x in example 11.1b. And as they solve this through, they get a fraction of 6 over 0. Anytime anything's over 0, it's undefined. So they're just explaining what they mean, what the process is by going through and getting that answer that is undefined. So in my, uh, in my work, I wouldn't put 6 over 0. I would put undefined, okay, because that's not part of our domain. Now, to find the input values that cause a rational expression to be undefined, there are a set of steps that we're going to work through, okay? In other words, I want to know right up, right up front what it is, what those values are that I cannot use for my variables, okay? So there's a way to find those out right off the bat, okay, so that we can know, okay, these are the values that are not going to work. They're going to give me an undefined answer, okay? So this is uh, where at the bottom of page 407, determining the values of a variable at which a rational expression is undefined, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, first of all, we need to get these in our notes, okay? Um, so we've got number one, step number one, uh, is we're going to set the denominator to equal zero. Okay, now uh, just a little note on this. Um, first, if it's possible, you're going to factor. Okay, um, so if there's anything that we can factor first, we're going to do that first if possible, okay? So put that in there first if possible. So before we set the denominator to equal 0, we're going to factor first if it's possible, all right? Step number two, is, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to solve through that <coughs> and solve to find the variable. Okay, and then step number three, we're going to state our answer <clears throat> in sentence form. Okay, um, so these are basically our three steps um, for finding which numbers are going to end up giving us a domain of zero so that we can avoid those 
or excuse me, uh, an answer uh, of undefined, not a domain of zero. What am I talking about? Um, so uh, let's go ahead and work through something like this so we can understand what our steps are. So if I have this rational expression of 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 5, to find what numbers are going to give me an undefined answer, I'm going to take my denominator in step number 1, First of all, I'm going to see if there's anything I can factor out. In this case, I can't, okay? Um, so I'm going to take this denominator, and I'm going to set it to equal 0. So I've got 3x minus 5 equals 0, okay? And then once I get it set to 0, all I'm doing is solving for x, okay? Just like I would in a regular equation, okay? Um, so I've got 3x equals positive 5 divide by 3, divide by 3, so x equals 5 over 3, okay? So in this case, uh, I would write my answer, um, you can say for this rational expression, x does not equal 5 over 3, okay? Uh, meaning that this value cannot be part of my domain, okay? So this is my answer, okay? Um, so uh, I would write this in sentence form. Um, you can put also uh, this value cannot be part of the domain. Okay, um, so we would write our answer in um, sentence form. So it's pretty simple. Um, all we're doing is just taking that denominator, setting that denominator to equal zero, and then solving for um, our variable in that case. Okay, then once you solve for that variable, then you know that x cannot equal uh, whatever that answer is. So it's pretty simple. Let's try another one here. Let's clear this. Okay, so we've got our steps. I've got my uh, rational expression here, x minus 3 over, oops, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, um, so first, uh, can I factor anything out? No, okay. Uh, there's no common terms in all three of these. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set our denominator, first of all, to equal 0. So x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Okay, now, in this case, normally we would just solve for x, but because we have an x squared, we're going to go back to this method of factoring. Okay, and remember we dealt with this before. When I've got a trinomial here and I have it set to 0, I'm going to factor this into parentheses, okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So I factor this, um, yeah, okay, um, still set to zero, just factored, and now I'm going to take both of these and uh, set them to equal zero. So x plus 2 equals zero, and x plus 3 equals zero, okay, so I've got x equals negative 2, and x equals negative 3, okay? So in my third step of stating the answer, I would say that uh, for this rational expression, x cannot equal negative 2, and x cannot equal negative 3. These values cannot be part of the domain. Okay, and so this would be then my answer, okay? Uh, because I know that x cannot equal, if, if x was a negative 2, then I would end up with undefined. Or if x was a negative 3, then I would end up with an undefined, okay? Um, so that's what that means. So this is how we can find whether or not uh, which numbers would end up giving me uh, an undefined answer, okay? So three steps. Number one, 
um, you set your denominator to equal zero. Number two, you solve for your variable. And then number three, you state your answer in sentence form. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, not real um, difficult as far as the work goes, um, but um, uh, you still have to go through the steps nonetheless, okay? Um, now, um, looking at here, let me jump back to my book here. There was one other thing I wanted to state here. Yeah, at the bottom of page 408, okay, um, so we've got a common misconception that since division by zero is undefined, division of zero is also undefined, okay? This is incorrect, all right? So there are some, uh, you can have a, a zero in your, um, in your numerator. You just cannot have it in your denominator. So I want you to put this in your notes, okay? See the zero rational functions, okay? Um, I want these notes in your book. If I get an answer that looks like this, this is undefined, and we've talked about that the whole lesson, okay? If I get an answer that looks like this, then my answer is zero, okay? Um, this is an okay and acceptable answer, all right? Now, zero over zero is also undefined because you have that zero in your denominator. So whenever the, the zero is in your numerator, that is uh, an acceptable position. You can still solve that. But if your zero is in your denominator, then it is undefined, okay, no matter what your numerator is, all right? So I wanted to give you that real quick just to include that in. Now let's look at our homework. Practice 11.1, uh, okay? Um, so for uh, numbers 1 through 12, we're just substituting the values for x and y um, in, these, um, uh, in these rational expressions, okay? So um, for this section, you're going to do 9, 3, 4, and 8, so those blue tabs. Up at the top of page 409, okay, you're going to find the values um, that x cannot equal for a rational expression. So you're going to go through those three steps and solve to find whatever cannot equal um, or cannot be uh, a value for your x, okay? So you're going to follow those three steps to do that, all right? Um, so I'm just going to give you the blue tabs here on basically 1 through 24, okay? Um, you don't need to do the review section at the bottom there, but I do want you to do the blue tabs uh, on 1 through 24, okay? Um, so that'll be your homework for tonight, Tuesday, April 28th. And if you have any questions, give me a call. But um, we're going to slowly make our way through chapter number 11 here and cover as much as we can, and then uh, we'll start studying for our uh, final exam. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Um, hope you in, uh, understood everything. If you have any questions, uh, let me know, but um, let's get that done. All right, guys, have a good day. Talk to you later.